All right, so my name is Wade Catlin. I am from a, a team in Standard Bank called Engineering Practices. And the purpose of this team is basically our mission statement is to make software engineering a competitive advantage of, of Standard Bank. We want to be, basically, we want to become the best software engineering organization in, in Africa, basically. And the things that we do, so Standard Bank is, as you know, a pretty huge company. There are thousands of, of employees. There are a few hundred dev teams within Standard Bank. And our job, I mean, we're a team of six people, um, six engineers, one, one manager. And our job is to work with the other few hundred software development teams within Standard Bank to help engage, to identify where they can improve, to, to work, sit down, write code with them, you know, and to, to generally disseminate good engineering practices within Standard Bank. So when we say good engineering practices, what do we actually mean? So when you think of, of companies with that people generally think of, 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 of as companies with, with good engineering practices, they tend to think of the big boys, you know, Amazon, Google, Netflix, et cetera. What distinguishes these companies from, from other companies? And there are a few things that, that, that come to, to hand pretty, pretty readily. So just given this example here, rate of change, you know, how many changes do these companies put in, you know, Amazon, 23,000 deployments a day, Google, 5,500, Netflix, a few hundred. Whereas if you look at the standard financial institution, we're talking about like 50, 100 a month. So you're talking like a good order, two orders of magnitude, you know, less than, than, than the leaders in, in, the, in the industry. And this is just one metric. I mean, there are others that you can pick as well. Like for instance, um, mean time to recovery, the big boys, they get stuff done. Something goes down, they get it back up in less than an hour, a few minutes. Whereas standard financial institutions could generally take a day, two days, even a week. You can pick other metrics as well. But that shows you the gulf between where, let's say, the average organization is and where the leaders with respect to software engineering is. Now, you can make the case to say, okay, well, a bank, you know, a bank has got regulators and other things that potentially slow them down that the, 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 the tech companies don't. But even accepting that, there's still, I mean, given that there's two orders of magnitude difference, there's still things that we can do to improve the situation. And that's what we're about and that's what we want to do. All right, so what are the things that these guys actually do? I mean, we're at a DevOps conference, so none of this should be unfamiliar to you. But basically, one of the key facilitators of becoming a good software engineering organization these days is to have a continuous pipeline, right through from discovery, integration, testing, right through to governance, you know. If you've got a continuous process, and if you've got automation, and if you've got all those things, you know, that, that the reason that DevOps exists, it goes a long way with respect to becoming a, a good, quality software engineering organization. So with respect to the software quality and software engineering, so given now that we've identified where the value comes from, so we look, what are the things that we could do? One of the things that you must do before you improve, you must be able to measure, you must be able to visualize. So we went and we had a look around at the, the DevOps landscape and there are a few categories and we've got four basic categories listed here. And we looked at a few things, you know, we looked at Jeff Humble's work with the Accelerate and the state of the DevOps practices. And we, we, we kind of settled on the Gartner model, which they've got four basic categories of, of, of metrics that, that you define to deliver value for your organization. You've got velocity and efficiency, which basically tells you, you know, how quickly you can deliver your stuff. You've got quality, which is about, you know, how good the, 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 the code that you're delivering actually is. And there are other, some software metrics, not like organizational effectiveness, which speaks to culture and the motivation of your teams, et cetera, and customer value, which is actually about, you know, how do your, your companies perceive and, and, and react to what you're doing. Now, the metrics that we've implemented are more focused on the first two categories, velocity and efficiency and, and quality. So we had a look at those two categories and we use those now to, 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 to implement what we call a, a DevOps score, which we'll use to, to measure the teams that we've got within the, the group. All right, so that's all well and good in theory, but we must actually translate this into practice. So what do we mean by defining these things? So the books and the theory and everything gives you a bunch of things that you need to define, but there's a bit of effort that you need to do to actually nail them down for your particular organization. So what we did, we went and we had a look at the, let's call it the, the value delivery pipeline, and we came up with metrics based on the research and all the, everything that we referred to and said, okay, well, let's, you know, what does this mean for Standard Bank? And we came up with a, with, a, with a few things. So in the velocity and efficiency category, we came up with six metrics that we've got here. So if you look at the value stream, 
you know, from the time some feature is requested up until right to the time when the change that implements that feature is deployed into production. We take that whole time and we say we call that the deployment lead time. And the objective would obviously be to make the deployment lead time as short as possible. The second metric, the release cycle time. So the difference here with the release cycle time is that it's all well and good when a feature has been requested, but often you know that feature could go into a backlog or be not be highly prioritized. The release cycle time is about when somebody actually starts working on that, on that, on that feature, till the time that that feature actually goes into production. Um, degree of test and release automation. So that's all about the things that you would typically have in your pipeline that you would want to automate, your unit testing, your integration, your build, your deploys, et cetera. And how much of your overall CI/CD pipeline you've actually got automation in place for. Change frequency, that's about how often you're delivering stuff to production. So you saw the Amazons and the Googles of this world, they do thousands of changes a day, and that's where we'd want to get to now, to improve change frequency. And obviously one of the things that would go hand in hand with improving change frequency would be about making smaller changes as well, having smaller changes more frequently. And then throughput as well, which is a related metric. So this is how many changes. So one is how many changes you're, you're going in, and the change frequency is how often those changes are going in. All right, so the next category that we looked at are the quality metrics. So again, uh, we got like a value pipeline, a value, uh, a value stream here. So the resolution process generally happens, you know, some, from the time something fails up until the time that that thing is permanently um, resolved. And we've got the various aspects along the way. So a change is, first of all, some, some failure happens. And then there's a period of time between you actually notice that something has failed. You know, and that's where we define our mean time to detect. And we want to make that as short as a, a time period as possible. Hopefully, we will want to notice it before our customers notice it as, as well. <laughs> so the next one is the mean time to recovery. So let's say, I don't know, an incident, a server's gone down. You know, you can recover the, 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 it, the incident by, you know, rebooting the server, for example. So the time between when the failure happened to the time you reboot that server, for instance, would be your time to recovery. No. However, no that may not address the root issue. So for example, the server could have gone down because there was a memory leak in the application, right? So you rebooted the server, you've resolved the incident, but you haven't resolved the problem. You can potentially keep having the, 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 the incident, but the incident is never actually completely, the, the root cause is never actually completely addressed, for instance, before you maybe change the code, and then you push the code that addresses the memory leak into production. And that's the final resolution, and that's what the average time to repair is. From the time incidents start happening, up until the time you actually make the permanent fix to address the underlying root cause of the problem. So we want to measure all of those things along that entire um, stream of activity. And then there are others now like downtime hours. You know, obviously you would want to minimize the amount of downtime hours that your systems have got. Defect leakage, that's about, okay, so you've got a whole bunch of tests and you've got um, automated tests, et cetera, but there will always be some cases where defects escape and actually get manifested in your production environment. So defect leakage is about what percentage of the issues that your application has get, de get identified and detected in production rather than in your, in your, um, in your testing on your development processes. Percentage of test automation pass, again, that's how many you know, test automated test cases you've got, and production incidents, how many incidents you're actually happening in production, and you would obviously want to minimize those numbers. All right, so those are what so we identified those 12 metrics as where we thought would, 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 would create value to the company. I know we didn't want to spend a year or 18 months, you know, agonizing and doing analysis paralysis. So what we decided to do was to be, do up a very quick MVP to validate the value of these metrics to the organization. So what we did, we created a, a very simple Power BI application and we surveyed the 350 odd teams in Standard Bank to see, okay, does this make sense to you? Does, does what we've defined, does it make sense to you? And we also identified where they are with respect to their maturity and a lot of these CI, CD, DevOps practices that, 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 that we're familiar with. And coming out of that as well, we also identified what tools are already in the company, you know, that would help address various aspects of your delivery, your, your value delivery pipeline, how you do requirements tracking, 
what tools you're using for incident management or change management, et cetera. And coming out of some of that analysis, we discovered that we could get the biggest bang for our buck for maybe starting with about, let's call it three tools. For instance, in Standard Bank, we've got Jira that we use for requirements tracking. We've got another um, tool called Remedy that we use for both incident and change management as well. And we realized that about maybe about 70% of the 350 teams that we've got in the company use those two, two, um, those two tools. And just given those two tools, we could m actually hit maybe about seven of the 12 metrics that we've got, you know, that we had earmarked. So we said we could get really high benefit for the effort expended to get, you know, information from Remedy and from Jira so that we could start calculating some of these metrics and making them visible to the organization. So we used that information. It was a manual exercise. We pull, did manual extracts and whatever, and we pulled them into Power BI just so that the organization could get a view of the information. And we showed them here in the, in the M M MVP that we created. And it was received very well. It, the, the, the stakeholders were quite happy with it. So at, it at least proved that the information was indeed valuable and it could you know, be beneficial to the organization. But however, given that it was a manual exercise and Power BI was obviously not something sustainable that you could do. So what we want to do was to automate this, you know, to, ma to automatically pull the information from these source systems so that we could calculate the metrics automatically. And that's where the next aspect came in now. So we, how many people in here are familiar with Hygieia? Um, a few people. So Hygieia is an open source product that's created, that was created by Capital One. And it is basically like a dashboard, and it's got a whole bunch of collectors that have got the ability to fetch information from different types of source systems. And it implements dashboards that can show you various aspects of your, um, your CI, CD pipelines and, and some other information. So we had a look around, and we said that would probably be a good starting point to start automating some of the things that we wanted to do. So we decided to adopt um, Hygieia. But however, Hygieia alone doesn't get us the entire way. So the Hygieia, so the overall architecture of the, of the solution that we, we ultimately um, build, uh, built and are still building has got ma ba basically three major components. Oops, wrong direction. Here, so that middle tier there is actually the Hygieia engineering dashboard. So Hygieia has got a bunch of pipelines and what they are basically collectors are that they're basically standalone units of code. They're actually implemented as microservices. They're run in Docker containers, whose job is to be able to fetch information from various types of systems, from Bamboo, your build systems, Jenkins, Jira. There are a whole bunch of them, about maybe about a dozen or so of them that, that are already implemented with Hygieia that can fetch information from those downstream systems and store them in a, in a database. And then from there, it's got a front end that you can actually render that information and see it in nice fancy graphs and whatever have you. The second aspect now is the executive dashboard. So the engineering dashboard just basically pulls in your raw metrics, how many commits you've done, how many changes you've done, how many incidents, et cetera. But we want to take that information and actually do some calculations on it to, to, to derive the metrics that we're talking about. So for example, the deployment lead time requires information from both your requirements tracking system, which is Jira, and your change management system, which is Remedy, and actually correlate that information so you can calculate the start time from one and the end time in the other so you can calculate your your end-to-end -end metric. So to do that, we had to define a bunch of metrics, you know, for our, for our, for our, for the, for the, for the items that we want to calculate. And we use another Hygieia project called the Executive Dashboard to, to do that stuff. And we implement our metrics in there. And what that guy does is he basically takes the raw information coming in from the engineering dashboard, applies a bunch of calculations to it. And he's also got a front end that you can use them to actually render the metrics that you're talking about. Then the third aspect is the team management portal. That's a custom application that we built now because we've got these various systems, Jira, Remedy, et cetera, and it's not easy to identify, like for instance, a Jira project, which team in the organization actually uses this particular Jira project. There's no naming conventions. These things happen all over time. They evolved organically. So what we use the team management portal to do is to a way for teams to basically sell in Project Y in Jira and Project Z in Remedy, et cetera, et cetera, so we can correlate all the information to calculate the metrics. All righty, so let me just switch to a quick demo of what we've produced so far. All right, so this is the Hygieia Executive Dashboard, and what you've got here, you've got a bunch of widgets that represent the various metrics. If I let me do this. Let me close this and make a little bit more space. 
that implement the 12 metrics that we were talking about, change frequency, deployment lead time, et cetera. And this is pulling in from, automatically pulling in from the collectors and pulling through to the, from all the, the teams in the organization. And here now on the left is something that we did a little bit of customizing to the, to the dashboard. So these basically represent all of the teams from a portfolio from an enterprise level. I've just scrubbed the data so you don't actually see the standard bike teams and business units here, but you can drill down and you can actually go down to whatever level. So the individual team, for instance, can go down to his specific team and see his information, whereas the CEO, for instance, would look, want to look at the whole group and see the metrics for the entire group. So if, for exa example, you took, let me see one that has got some data here, details, change frequency, for instance. So then you can drill down and actually see the evolution of that metric over the course of 12 months, for instance. And you can do that for all of the, 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 the metrics that, you, that you've seen here. All right. Um, let me skip that. So what are some of the things? What are some of the things that we learned? So we're still on the journey. Um, so one thing is that you, you notice now we started with 12 and we, 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 want, we imp implemented five initially. One of the things that we thought was important, which is why I said it's also relevant to startups, you need to start somewhere and get value delivering very quickly. You, know, you can't do everything at once. You need to get your stuff up so that value can come in and you can start making changes and adjusting as, as necessary. Um, the map is not the territory, so we decided to use Hygie an open source project, but obviously it doesn't completely cater to your requirements. You need to do your customization, irrespective of whatever you do. You, know? you must actually go and get your hands dirty, you know, go and make, fix code, et cetera, et cetera. Um, standardization versus you know, autonomy of teams, which is a big issue for companies as big as Standard Bank, where you've got hundreds of people doing different things, and there's always a balance that you need to trade off. You know, to standardize to make things like this easier versus having the teams being have the autonomy to do the things that wa they want to do. And we haven't quite struck the balance yet. We're still going on through our process. But, you know, that's one of the things that you also always need to, to take consideration on, of. Obviously, it's not perfect. We're still working on the metrics. We've got a few more to go, but we're still on our journey. And, yeah, so that's where we are with respect to our journey thus far. <laughs>